today we're reviewing the R1200 GS Rally. Thank you to BMW Ocean at Falmouth and Greg and his team for allowing us to take this bike out and show you what it looks like. How amazing does it look? I really, really love the fact that they've changed the styling slightly. Now this is the rally version and it's billed by BMW as being the best GS ever. Now this bike I've just filled up because it's got literally, or it had one mile on when I picked it up. It's got five miles, it's got five miles on it now and it took 18 or just over 18 litres of fuel. So I'm guessing that you should be able to get about 200 miles out of a tank depending on how you're riding. So this BMW GS has got 125 newton meters of torque and 125 brake horsepower and it sings along the same lines as the boxer engine on the other GS's and the GS Adventures and I think this might be quite just slightly tweaked for the off-road market. Now this one's fitted with all of the gadgets and accoutrements that those magicians at BMW have put together the Gear Shift Assist Pro, as with many of the other newer bikes from BMW, is buttery smooth. The two 2017 models of these GS, GS Adventures, and most of the range throughout BMW that we've tested so far, are buttery smooth in the, gear de in the speed delivery, the power delivery, but also in the, the gear changing. The pegs are in the right place and it feels very much like I'm sat on my normal GS Adventure. Same sort of seating position. The pegs are in just the right place. The brake pedal and the gear lever are readily to foot and that eliminates the need to hunt around with your feet to try and find exactly where all of the controls are. The seating position, or the seat, on this bike is really comfy. It's a one seat, so it hasn't got a pillion seat and a rider seat. I guess there's an advantage to just having one seat. I don't know what that could be, but it might just be down to aesthetics, I'm not sure. If you know, put a comment down in the description, because every day is a learning day. The dials are really easily readable at the front here. The fonts and the graphics are exactly the same as a GS Adventure and GS and across the range. And I really like them. They're really, really familiar to me, but they're also able to show me all of the information that I need in a really, really easy to see fashion. At slow speed, this bike is incredibly well weighted. At 244 kilos, it's about 20 kilos lighter than my adventure. But having said that, it's so, we so well weighted that at slow speed, it doesn't feel like I'm having to compensate an awful lot with my handlebars and keep adjusting to the extent that it might look messy. It, it feels very clean. Now that tiny little small screen it kind of feels really weird sat on, an, on a GS and having a really, really tiny screen. But what it does do for me is on my bike, I have quite a big screen as you know. I put a card on the video so that you can see the screen that I fitted to mine and the difference. And this is a minuscule screen in comparison. And it kind of makes me feel at one with the elements. And I think marketing this bike and building it for a primarily off-road market, having a massive screen like the normal adventures have got, and again aftermarket screens, I think could get right in the way of what you want to do. I mean, you want to be stood around, stood up, maneuvering this bike to such an extent that you don't want things like that in your way. Certainly, if you drop the bike, and I guess off-roaders out there will tell me whether they drop bikes 
a lot or not, but if you do drop the bike, you've got less risk of those sort of things being damaged and broken. Power delivery is really good. You've got the responsiveness of that boxer engine, the engine braking that is characteristic of that engine, but you've also got in the back of your head and at the twist of the throttle, an immense amount of power. The brakes are really good and you would expect that on a new bike, but the brakes are really good and they're linked brakes as well. So the harder you put the front brake on, the harder the back brake will also engage, which, will, which is really good. I like the placing and the seating position in terms of my hands. My arms don't feel like they're under or overextended to reach the handlebars. Neither do they feel like they're stretching wider than my shoulders or narrower than my shoulders. So it's really quite a comfortable feeling. Again, BMW are fitted, they use your refinements with their switches and their buttons, which give you a real taptic feedback, like across the range, that really, really gives you the impression that you're, you're making adjustments to the settings, using all of the systems on the bike, and you haven't got to keep checking to make sure that they're working. You've got a two-step handlebar grip heat. Now you have got all of the usual refinements with all of the different suspension settings for this bike and it's it just feels really lovely is it as nimble as the other bike well i'll just go around this car park just a couple of times just to show you how nimble the bike is i don't feel that i'm overextending to get full lock full lock is very good yeah very very maneuverable very maneuverable the styling of this bike is really, really beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love the deep blue, and I love the fact that they've got this beautiful bit on here, R1200GS, which detects the rally. I love the fact that they've got a blue frame, and on that blue frame, they've also got these bits here to protect the frame. Now, it would be quite nice if they did that with the GS Adventure and the GS, but I guess this being billed a bike that is more for off-roading, that's why they're putting them on there. But I really do love that blue. It just makes the bike pop. I mentioned earlier about the seat. It's one seat, which contours all the way to the back. Now, the only thing I have noticed is for on-road riding, you haven't got that distinctive lip between the rider and the pillion seat. So you could be inclined to slide around a little bit, but generally very, very comfortable little position. Now on this bike, they've also added the proprietary fittings there, which are the proprietary fittings for the Vario cases. Now I was talking to BMW and saying, well, if you wanted the aluminium panniers on there, could you fit them? And I think it's, well, it's a lot of money to be able to put the rack on, but there is the ability to put it on there. Looking from the front to the back, this bike has got the same, the same, I would say same issues with one twist for the fact that the radiators are really exposed underneath. But what they have done on these is they've already got guards on there, as you can see there, already got guards there fitted. And I really wish that BMW with their accessory range would make them more accessible, if that makes sense, to people fitting them on their bike before they buy them. The headlight, standard headlight from BMW, standard across the range of GS and GS Adventures. But look at this tiny screen. But I actually found it quite effective. At high speed, 60 or national speed limit, all the way down to 20s and 30s. And you have got the advantage on this one of being able to adjust the screen make it even lower, possibly get rid of it. And I would say that that's probably more for the off-road. And then the on-road, you can get it right up. Still got the proprietary fittings for sat-nav, which is really good. Right in the line of sight, so you don't have to move your head. You could just flick your eyes down and see where you're going. The display is as easy to read as any other GS Adventure or GS. Really amazingly looking clean fonts there. All of your fuel, 
what mode you're in, the time, what gear you're in, odometer reading, your automatic lights, your heated grips, exterior temperature and a whole host of other things on there. They've got hand guards and the hand guards are the same as on the, G the standard GS actually, quite small. If you're going to use it primarily for touring, have a look at fitting something like the Givy hand, hand guard extenders and I'll put a link above on a card. So interestingly, on this bike, we have got the standard side stand, but there's no center stand. Now when I was talking to BMW before I took the bike out, they did say that it was slightly higher than a normal GS, and I presume that's for the ground clearance when you're using it off-road. So I presume that's why they haven't got a center stand, which kind of feels a bit odd really. On the back, we have got a larger mud sling, crud catcher, mud guard, whatever you want to call it. But I still think that that could chuck up quite a lot of dirt, especially here, right next to the can. However, if this is billed as being used off-road much, much more than on-road, actually it makes sense to have a smaller one there so it doesn't get trapped or have things trapped between there and the wheel. So view from the back, we've got the standard can that's fitted on GSs and the GS Adventures. Really, really lovely sound. And then we've got all of these gadgets in here the dynamic ESA and all of that gubbins in there, all the magicians and magicery, all of their great stuff in there that makes the bike just work how you want it as a rider. Now notice down here on the foot pegs, interestingly, for an off-roader bike, the difference between the adventure is that I have another flap that can go down here to raise that up, whereas this one's not, it's just the standard size quite weird that they haven't put it on that and they've put it on the adventure really don't know why if you do know why put a comment in the description below some of the stylings changed the styling on the front is much different than the GS the 2016 GS had this in my opinion this really really horrible bit of plastic there a bit of plastic that was there it was almost almost to me an afterthought by BMW, but I really, really do like the way that they've integrated that and into the look of the front. Kind of looks more evil and ready to do business, less likely to break, less likely to come off. And they've got rid of those horrible points and smoothed them out, which I think looks really, really lovely. One thing I have noticed about this bike is the position of the wing mirrors. They're, they seem an awful lot closer to me than on the GS and the GS Adventure, which just meant that I had to angle them and maneuver them into a better position for me. But nevertheless, they do give a good view behind you. And I do feel that I'm not restricted by any of my view. I can see everything around me, and certainly in front of me because of that tiny little screen. And you know, thinking to myself, Whilst I'm riding this bike around, it feels exactly like my GS and GS Adventure. As nimble as my, my bike, as nimble as the GS is, coupled with that, that low weight to keep it nimble. But it feels like a different bike. I've been trying to put my finger on why that it feels like a different bike to me. And I think it's because it's not got all of the fins on the front for the uh, wind to be taken away from you. It's not got the big screen but yet you've still got all of the, the refinements that you have on any GS and Adventure. So for me, I think it's a great little bike, or great big bike. The price point, I think, starts at around £13,000 here in the UK, which is, you know, it's a considerable amount of money, but not when you look at what you're getting for it. You're getting a bike that you can fit panniers to really easily just by buying the proprietary ones. You've got a bike that can tour and tour for miles and miles and give you probably at least around 200 miles out of a tank. You get an versatile bike that on a tour you can carry all the stuff with you with different modes, road, dynamic, endurance, endurance pro, all of that great lovely stuff that makes us all happy as bikers. As well as all the safety equipment like the ABS, the linked braking. It's another one of BMW, I think, immense bikes. And I can kind of see where I, I initially thought, well, 
a downside to the fact that they haven't got a center stand. It's aimed at a different market, aimed at a market that perhaps that would get in the way, get snagged on things as an off-road bike. The clearance on the back of the wheel um, and no, no real hugger or protection from getting you dirty. But I guess if it's, if it's aimed at an off-roader, and off-roaders are going off-road, in and out of mud, water, everything that the world can throw at it, the one thing you don't want is things getting caught up in that hugger and then causing a problem and breaking things and stopping you having your ride. But also it's not the sort of thing that you would think about as an off-roader, about not getting muddy, about getting to your destination as clean as possible, because that's not what off-roading bike's about. Off-roading bike biking is about getting down and dirty with the surroundings, having fun, getting in and out of the mud, testing the machine to its limits. And I really do think that this bike could help you do that, but also allow you to go to work on it, get to and from anywhere you need to go, give you good responsiveness, good riding as a town bike, a city bike. It's nice and thin, so you can do a lot of filtering without hassle, not worrying about boxes. But should you want to put stuff on there, it's really easy to start loading the bike up with the things that you need. Every time I review a bike, I really, really like to think that I give an honest opinion of how I found the bike, whether that's good or whether it's bad or whether it's indifferent. And I've kind of been a bit biased in this this review because it is an adventure. It is a GS. It's all mixed into one but with a different market. And I think that that's a real massive positive for BMW because I've not seen any of these on the road yet. So if you were to go out and buy one and relatively it's a good price point for the bike that you're getting. If you were to go out and buy one and ride this around this is I think this is certainly a head turner. Certainly for people in the biking community because it's so new. The colour scheme pops, it makes the bike stand out. It's something a little bit more special than a normal GS. It enables you to stand up and ride it like I'm doing now without any hassle. You know, it's well weighted. It's got enough power. It's got enough torque. It's got all of the gadgets that you need to have on it. I, I really do think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I really do think the BMW have done it again and hit the nail on the head with a bike that with a bike that will not only do everyday stuff, but will enable you to say, hey guys, let's get out on the bike and go green laning or do a bit of off-roading. And dare I say it, it might it might help people to do a, a little bit more off-roading. Now it's something that Mark and I have been talking about and I'm thinking about doing one day and doing a bit of off-roading because you can train yourself to ride a bike as best and as much as possible to do it on the road and the road always throws up different challenges not only in the surface the weather conditions but also these people driving in boxes that really don't see you or don't even care about your life when you're on a bike I know it's not everybody but there are a lot of people out there that don't see bikes but coupled to the fact that you can control your bike a lot better is the experience and the skills that you can gain by riding off-road. And I would really, really like in the future sometime to have a go at off-road riding because I think it would really help me control the bike a little bit more and feel at one with the bike. I think this bike would appeal to anybody that likes an adventure type bike, that likes a, a GS type bike. It's got that special bit about it, this bike, that it's built to be off-roading, but it's also built to be on the road. It's kind of a real good compromise between the two, with no real compromise on either side. It's really, really weird. And that tiny screen is really, really quite effective. And it's kind of made me think, even though I've got a big screen on my bike and I'm happy with it, I'm not going to change it is the answer to have a smaller screen rather than a bigger screen. I don't know, what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Just want to see how this screen behaves. 
Now that's up to 60. I have got quite a lot of air in my face and against the helmet, and I'm not sure whether you can hear that. But what I haven't got is a huge amount of buffeting on my shoulders or my body. So even though it's a tiny screen, it really has got some really clear, clean air here. I don't feel any air where my hand's waving around, none whatsoever. So I must give a, a big shout out to Greg and his team at Ocean BMW at Falmouth for allowing us and giving us the opportunity to take out another brand spanking new bike with no miles on the clock and give you guys an honest opinion of what we think about it. Now obviously our opinions are subjective and it would be great to know what you guys think about your experience on this bike, whether you think you're going to buy a bike or get one of these bikes, let us know down in the description below. Remember to give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.